Hey, Donald Miller, how you guys doing today? Donald Miller with Electrical Services. It is March 12th, okay? And I'm making a video because someone uh, requested, and I thought it was a pretty good topic, okay? Um, and, you know, I actually did a couple rough draft videos on this topic because it is important. Um, how to prevent injuries in this trade and short duration as well as long duration because you're going to be in this trade for a long time. So it's a topic that requires a little bit more than just shooting from the hip every morning. That's usually how I'm making my videos. It's the morning. I don't pre-plan my videos. I just speak right off the cuff. You know, I'm just going to tell you my opinion in the moment. And typically when the guys are in the shop, if we're on a, a topic, I'm speaking from experience and that's usually where my advice comes from. If I'm not experienced in the matter, I clearly state I'm not experienced in the matter. Okay, I'm not gonna give experience, I'm not gonna give advice if I don't have experience in the subject, okay? And that's proper apprenticeship, okay? If guys are wanting to learn the trade from my point of view, then I can only speak of the trade through my experience and what I've seen and how it'll help them <clears throat> by listening to me, all right? So injuries, okay, how to prevent injuries, all right? The, the best way to prevent injuries is setting up your schedule from Monday to Friday. Most injuries are caused due to a lack of planning on the employee's part. They're usually tired, they're fatigued, they're living a lifestyle that doesn't allow enough sleep, and they're not paying attention, all right? If you plan your Monday through Friday correctly, and you have a good sleep schedule, and you're waking up and you're, you're early to the job, at least 10 minutes early, that right there, puts you in a better frame of mind, all right? Most injuries occur due to negligence, being rushed, being tired, um, or not paying attention, all right? So if you can go to bed at a certain time, Monday through Thursday night, be on time, and be alert and pay attention, you're preventing injuries just by doing that, okay? Um, now, during the workday, if you wanna go further into the matter, bring your lunch, okay? Bring a cooler. I have a cooler till this day, I bring a cooler to work. Not only does it save me money daily, it, puts at my hand, whether water, juice, soda, snacks, lunch, okay? All in my cooler, all right? So I'll bring my coffee cup in the morning and switch over to, right now I'm doing protein shakes, but it's, you're, I'm not going to work empty handed, okay? So you wanna make sure you stay hydrated. That's number one make sure you have water, okay? Dehydration or, you know, you get the shakes if you don't have sugar in you. All these things add up to injuries, okay? Just taking care of yourself. So your, your Monday to Friday, bring your lunch every day, bring a cooler, okay? And take care of your body okay this is a laborious trade and you want your body to maintain itself throughout your career all right that's one portion okay number two proper tools all right if you're in this trade for the long haul have quality tools 
have the correct dikes that you like. I know everyone likes to, I started out with Klein, but I, I went to Nipix after Klein, all right? I like Nipix, it's a, the metal stays sharper, longer. Yes, there's not a lifetime warranty on them. Yes, with Klein, they go dull, they'll replace them, okay? But I just like Nipix, it cuts better. It's, a, it's just a better dikes, they make better Lyman's. Um, or Knepix, okay, I call them Knepix. But proper tools really help with, you know, the longevity of your hands. Like if you have some bad pliers or your bad dikes, you're gonna have carpal tunnel, like your hands will cramp up, especially if you're using them all day long, it can get brutally painful. So you wanna make sure you have proper tools. All right, wear gloves. This is something that I don't, like I, maybe I learned it later on, but if you're cutting into a box, okay, and the box is metal, if you don't have gloves on, you really can't get into the box because you're gonna get cut up, okay? Especially if you're working with MC wire or you're working with like a 12 gauge and you're cutting like the copper, your, your hands are in there, they're gonna get, they're gonna get diced up. If you have a pair of gloves with your fingers cut out, you have a lot more control of the wire or whatever you're working with. And it protects the back of your hands. So when you're digging into something, you don't have to worry about getting your the back of your hand caught on something. You don't have to worry about the copper catching you. Because yeah, like the little tiny bleeds all over your hands, it'll happen. So I prefer gloves. I, I wear gloves any time, especially if I'm in an environment, if I'm in plaster homes, you cannot work efficiently without gloves and plaster. You're gonna be slower. You're, you're, you're just not gonna have total control where a person that is wearing gloves will have total control because the gloves are protecting their hands from the plaster, the debris, the wood. So invest in a decent pair of gloves. They don't have to be thick. They can be paper thin as long as they protect the outside of your hand. Um, wear a tool belt. I can't stress the importance of a tool belt and how valuable wearing a tool belt is. You have to make it, every person is gonna have to make a decision for themselves whether they put a tool belt on or not. The guys that are trained with a tool belt end up having better careers, more income, more opportunity over the long haul of the trade. It takes time. It doesn't happen in weeks. That's why you wanna get into a habit where you have your tool belt on for years, okay? And it makes a better tradesman out of you. If your line of work has the option of a tool belt, if your line of work doesn't have tool belts on, then ignore that whole past comment. But if you're in a field that, you know, a tool belt is optional, put it on. Okay, regardless if your current employer likes tool belts or not, this is for your career, not your employment. Okay, if you if you view it as your employment, you're, you're shortchanging yourself. And, you know, if you want to get paid less, go ahead, get paid less. The guys that put the tool belt on over the span of their career will make more, will be given more opportunity, and will go further in the trade. Doors will open up for them that they didn't even know existed. Okay, so the guys that say, oh, I, I don't wear a tool belt, and that's BS, well, you don't even know the doors of opportunity because they've always stayed closed to you. The guy that's wearing the tool belt, on the other hand, it's just weird who you meet, who who talks to you, what what superintendent, what foreman. It, it's weird how that happens, but put your tool belt on is the best advice I can give you, okay? Have learned how to use your tools with your tool belt on, okay? It prevents one, it prevents unneeded trips for materials, unneeded trips for tools, because they're right there at your hip, all right? Invest in a decent tool bag, 
Okay, I have an Occidental tool bag. Yes, my tool bag is like $300, okay? My tools are expensive, but that's because I'm in this trade for a lifetime, okay? If you're putting a tool belt on for a Saturday, it doesn't matter what you buy. Go buy the cheapest thing at Home Depot. But if you're gonna be in this trade for a career, invest in your tools, invest in your footwear. By all means, do not wear sneakers, all right? Invest in a pair of boots that are comfortable, okay? Personally, I spend roughly around $350 for a pair, okay? I buy Red Wing Irish Setter with the BOA as well as with the custom inserts, okay? The custom inserts are built for my feet. I get, I get put on the computer they tell me what my pressure points are. All these things benefit your career, all right? So yes, my boots are expensive. I'm gonna be in my boots 12 hours a day, minimum five days a week, all right? I want to be comfortable. I do not want foot fatigue. I don't want my feet hurting. So I invest in good boots. I invest in a good tool bag. I invest in knee pads, okay? There's times you're gonna need to be on your knees and we were never allowed to sit. That's like the one of the worst habits you can have is sitting down to device out, sitting Indian style, you know, or if you're too heavy, you have to lay on your side and you look like a beached whale, all right? It's better that you invest in a decent pair of knee pads and you kneel down and you do the device that's in front of you or you fish or whatever you're doing that requires you to get lower, all right? This is how you prevent injuries. This is how you have a career that lasts longer with promotions throughout it, okay? Most of my apprenticeship, I am advising guys and I'm teaching them how to excel in the trade not just stay employed. There's more than 60% of this trade will just stay employed. There's gonna be about 20 to 30% that excel, that rise through the ranks, that become the foreman, that become management, okay? That have opportunities given to them because of these types of steps, all right? And these steps prevent injuries. Will injuries happen? Obviously, injuries are gonna happen most injuries that I that I went through were my own fault, okay? Poked my eye out, okay? Well, I put my extension ladder up on wiring with the wire hooks, went up the ladder. There was a branch that was behind my ladder. I saw the branch and I was too lazy to move it. I figured the ladder will hold it back. I went up there, the branch released, whipped around, caught me in the eye, all right? So most of my injuries, most of them were either due to my own negligence or my own fatigue, all right? Now, training. Proper training has a lot to do with whether you get injured on a job site or the guy next to you gets injured on a job site. So when you're picking your career path or who you want to be employed by, look at, don't just go and try to get hired. Figure out what you want out of the trade and then go towards that. And that's important, okay? You know, I apprenticed underneath a master electrician that paid me peanuts because he promised to teach me the trade in a manner that I would become a master electrician. I didn't want a job. I wanted to become a master electrician. And there's a, that's a big difference, okay? Because if you're wanting to be a master electrician, that means you're stating that I am gonna come to work every day open-minded, willing to listen, willing to be reprimanded, and it's a lot more enduring than just coming to work as a job, okay? I did the job thing in the beginning, 
all right? I worked in new construction, and then I worked in remodeling, okay? Where I clocked in, I worked my eight to 10, and I clocked out and went home, and do this, do this, do this. You're taught little tricks and everything, but you're not apprenticed, okay? So if you, if you wanna become a master electrician, I suggest apprenticing underneath someone. It was probably the most valuable decision I made in my early career, okay? And I apprenticed underneath a master electrician. He paid me next to nothing for over two years until I really got my bearings behind me and I got all the bad habits out of me and I got really ethical and I really started understanding the trade and then I was compensated. Is that doable for everyone? No, okay? But most master electricians don't care about your personal life. They don't care if you have debt. They don't care if you need to make money, they don't. Okay, they're already a master electrician. They're already set, okay? When you go up to a master electrician and you're asking to be taught by them, they're taking on a huge responsibility. They don't care what your personal problems are, okay? If they do accept to teach you, they set the rules. If you don't want that type of employment, don't go that route. Okay, go get a job, go go work for someone else. But if you're looking to be apprentice underneath a master electrician, which is extremely valuable education, okay? It's a completely different way to learn the trade. And I highly recommend it if someone has that opportunity to be trained by a master electrician. And I'm gonna tell you now, it's not easy. You're going to get yelled at. You're going to get reprimanded more than the normal employee does. You're going to get held to a higher standard more than an employee does. Okay? It's, it's a different education platform. Someone's trying to call. But I don't want to stray too far off the topic of injuries. Okay? But how you're taught this trade has a lot to do with if you're going to be injured or not. Okay. Um, every, anything from troubleshooting to how you set your job up, how clean you are, how disciplined you are with your tools, all these things factor in to whether or not injuries happen on your site. All right. So it's not a, just a matter of what are some tips not to become injured your entire training wraps around whether or not if you're going to become injured or not okay so that's the video even went long and i'm nowhere like i could talk about training and good training platforms and bad training platforms you know working with people that are incompetent okay what do you do how do you stay away from an inc incompetent people are extremely dangerous in the electrical trade Okay, they will get people hurt and not even know it. All right, but that, I think it, it's gonna have to be another video. God bless, enjoy your Tuesday out there, everyone.